Hey there, happy day 1091 of What's You Up To Now. It's Sharon Horn Elstrom here, documenting my journey as I transitioned from the brick and mortar corporate world of business to the online world of business. In 2017, I had the opportunity to, uh, as part of my divorce, of course, I guess it's, I look at it now as if it's an opportunity. It didn't necessarily feel like an opportunity at the time, but an opportunity to stop doing the things that I was doing in my previous life and take a deep breath and say, what do I want to do? What do I, I really want to do right now? What am I curious about? What have I been interested in? What do I want to explore now? It was kind of like a, a personal reset, a personal redo, a start over where I was able to actually say, well, if I could do anything, what do I want to do right now? And I did that. I, I decided I would hop online and I would learn about the internet marketing online world or just the digital world of business, which is a very exciting, ever-changing uh, industry. And it's it's interesting. The path that I took is different than probably most people's path that they took to jump into the online world. And of course, I was aware of the internet. I am older, so I didn't grow up with the internet. But I remember being so excited that I stayed up all night the first time I had access to the internet. And I stayed up all night for a couple of nights. I had a little, you know, little kids at the time. <laughs> little little kids at the time and I had a, a full-time job and I'm like okay well this is crazy I can't stay up all night but I'm really curious about it so I kind of put my interest in the internet on the back burner and every once in a while I'd be involved in something that would give me a little bit of a different taste of what the online world was like but I was running businesses and I was working in corporate America on the side and so I didn't really have and raising a family young family so I didn't really have the time and the energy to put forth toward learning anything about the digital world, the online world. And I'm actually grateful that I didn't start back then because it was a whole lot harder than it is now to do things and do a lot of very amazing, fun, creative things on the internet. So I was able to do a personal reset and explore different things, which turned out with 2020, COVID-19 and it going into 2021, all the craziness that's going on around us, that being in the online world was a very good move. It's made the pandemic and everything pretty smooth and pretty seamless for me personally. And it's put me in a position so that I can help the people that I'm here to help and serve in a better way because I've gone down the path a little bit before them. So as they're adding an online component to their business, I can say, all right, this is what you want to do. One, two, three, four, five, not, you know, seven, six, two, 29, 14, <laughs> like I did it. So I've learned from what's what really matters. What do you really need to learn and know and do? What can you hire other people to, to do for you? What should you do? What shouldn't you do? What works and what doesn't? And you know, trial and error is not the way I recommend doing it, but you also have to find what works for you because even though we're the same in a lot of ways, we're also very different, unique and special. And we need to make sure that that's coming through and that we're being ourselves, you know, thus the strange teddy bear background. I uh, <clears throat> actually went and saw my niece yesterday and saw her incredible video and podcasting setup. And I was so jealous. <laughs> Not so, you know, She's got a lot more space than I do, but I am definitely going to learn from what she's set up because it's just, it's a nice plain background with some lights on it. And it's easier than my strange bedroom, like my strange setups. But I was trying to hang some things and I'm like, you know, I don't really want to hang my grateful and my be grateful stuff. Yeah, I do, but I don't. So I want to see what I want to come up with and what I want to, and how I want to show up in the world. So instead, I I used to collect teddy bears. I know that's a weird thing, but when I was young and through adulthood, I collected hundreds and hundreds of teddy bears. And over the years, I've actually, I, I got rid of my collection and stopped saving it because I wasn't doing anything with it. And as I've been downsizing and, and decluttering my life, believe it or not, this is decluttering my life. I, I still kept certain bears. This one, my nephew in the Air Force made. This one, uh, my nephew in the Air Force, I guess like they're all Air Force bears, interesting. Aviator bears, maybe because I want to see further and fly higher. I'm sure there's some subliminal reason that I haven't explored yet. And this guy's just cute for Christmas and it's kind of cold and snowy out, so it reminds me to bundle up when I'm going outside. <clears throat> uh, which is a total off topic, but it's all about personally resetting. You know, I had the same background for the majority of last year and it was a cluttered, it was very me, very eclectic, better, very cluttered, very colorful, interesting background. 
But now I'm like, all right, what and how do I really want to show up? It's time for a personal reset, personal reset of, you know, my health, my eating, how I take care of myself. You know, every year at the beginning of the year, I reevaluate and I think about what did I do last year? What worked? What didn't work? The last year was a year that kind of blew up everybody. And unlike, you know, even though I was pretty unscathed, I had to make changes and do things differently, just like everybody else did. I had to figure out how I was going to get things that I needed without ever going anywhere, without being able to go out and do things. So we all had to overcome those same challenges. And how we did it is different for each of us, but uh, like everything else, this too shall pass. But it requires sometimes a personal reevaluation of our priorities, which is always a good thing, by the way. <clears throat> and I think a lot of people had to reevaluate and, and reimagine their lives last year. And that's that's never going to change. We should always be doing that. We should always be looking for ways to make and create the life that we want because no one's going to do it for us. So how am I doing that? <clears throat> Besides having a cloggy throat and needing a drink of coffee, how am I doing that? Well, on my Super Size Your Business page, when I work where I work with business clients and business customers and businesses and some entrepreneurs, we work and talk about every single day change and challenges and how we're going to work through those and how we can make sure those are always an asset and a benefit to us. Most people look at change and they they cringe and they, they resist it and they don't want to change. They want to just keep going along with their life as they've known it in the past. They want to keep doing the things that work for them, which I highly recommend, by the way. But they, they forget that they're still tolerating and putting up with a lot of things that don't work for them. Uh, so <clears throat> every day I share an idiom, an expression. I'm doing about 100 days of Proverbs right now because at the end of last year, I had gone through my entire book. I started this project when I was moving and I found this book that used to belong to my kids. It's a dictionary of idioms and there's 600 plus idioms in here. This book was brand new, never had been cracked when I found it as I was packing up to move things in our, uh, our fam family home. And I thought, oh, well, that might be a fun thing to do. Grab an idiom, go randomly through the book, just grab an idiom a day and then talk about how can you use that to grow and build and create the business that you want? Because that's what our life is all about. It's about creating the life and the business and the, the things that we want to have and achieve in life. It's one of the coolest things about living in the United States of America. And if you're listening to me and you don't live there, it's one of the coolest things about living in the United States of America. We have the freedom to create the life we want, no matter what our background, no matter what our past, no matter what our experience has been, no matter how many times we've messed up or screwed up before, we have the opportunity to make each and every day a brand new day. And so one of the ways I like to do that is to look at a, a saying. It, a lot of people do like a word of the day. I like to do a an idiom or a proverb or an expression of the day. And we look at what does it mean? Where did it come from? What's the history of it? If I can find it, there's some, there have actually been some where it's been super frustrating because I can't find any information about where they came from and why we use them. And so it makes it a little harder to understand how to tie that into building and growing our businesses. But I challenged myself to do every one of the sayings in this book, even the hard ones. When I first started doing it, it was randomly and I would pick out the ones that were easy to tie to business. And then I got to the, to about, there were probably about a hundred left and I said, okay, this is getting harder. And then I said, do I want to quit and do something else, find idioms somewhere else, or do I want to do all of them? And I set myself a challenge because I challenge myself way more than I challenge other people to do every single one in the book. And it got hard, but I still got them all done. And then I ran out of them because I finished the whole book and I'm like, all right, what do I do now? And I got a dictionary of <clears throat> everything and every day, I, I, the night before I started doing, I'd go through and I would find the next idiom and I was doing it alphabetically and I'm like, this is super duper boring and it doesn't really fit. So I decided that I was looking up proverbs for something, Christmas sayings or around the holidays and I'm like, well, what are some of the, the it led me to sayings about Christmas, then sayings about the new year, then, then uh, some of them are idioms, some of them are just phrases and, and sayings. And then I uh, Googled top 10 proverbs and that led me to 50 top best proverbs and another 50. And so I just compiled a big list of, of the, like the ones that came up on Google. Thank you, Google. And I just said, okay, I've done a couple of these before, but a lot of them I haven't. And there were only a few on there that I had actually never heard. And so I thought, 
that's a good place to start. So beginning 2021, a little before 2021, I just started doing and picking from my list of Proverbs and we're just going down the list. I think today was probably day 26, 27. I'm not exactly sure, uh, but I've got like a hundred. So the first hundred days of 2021, for sure, we're gonna do a proverb every single day. Why Proverbs? Because they've been around hundreds of years, at least hundreds of years. And that means they have, whether we consciously are aware of it or not, have shaped either us or the people around us that have had an impact on us. You know, today's was a watch pot never boils. I don't know hardly anybody who hasn't been wanting to boil a, a pot of water for something. Either you're boiling eggs or you're boiling potatoes or you're boiling pasta or rice for some reason, or you're, you're preparing because water is the foundation of so many dishes that we create and cook. And so you're trying and you want it to hurry up and boil and you're watching it and you're checking back in it all the time and you're stirring it and you're wondering why it hasn't started boiling yet. <laughs> Whereas if you just put it on the stove and went and did something else for five minutes and came back, it would already be boiling. And it just is a reminder of how our perception and how we're thinking and about things and believing about things impacts either positively or negatively the results. Now, a pot of water is always gonna boil, right? If it's put on a heat source and, and heated for the right amount of time to get it to be the right temperature, it's gonna boil. But it's our perception of how long that takes. And it usually, if you have the same conditions, it's gonna happen at the same exact time whenever those conditions are, are applied, right? If I put it on high, the, the burner, it's gonna boil faster than if I put it on low, right? It might take hours if I put it on extra low or warm, it might take hours for it to reach the right temperature. If I put it on high, it's gonna happen faster. If I watch it, if I either watch it on high or watch it on low, I'm gonna perceive it to take longer than if I'm doing something else and I'm not watching it. I'm wanting something to occur, the water to boil with expectation that it's gonna boil, but without attachment to how and when it exactly happens. I open myself up to not only having it take longer, but also to have it happen sooner because I'm not dictating the how and when of every little detail, micromanaging anything, and I'm just letting it happen in its own specific universal time, right? Uh, so that was our, our idiom for and our proverb for today from Ben Franklin, of course, mid 1700s, he wrote under the pseudonym Poor Richard and it was in his almanac during those years. Uh, our challenge today, our 365 day challenge, do one thing every day that centers you, was all about breathing, deep breathing with a count of, of three, which my granddaughter actually talked to me about last weekend when she was having a sleepover and we went to the zoo. So it was interesting that I'm, lo I'm actually loving, I'm actually gonna say something amazing about the school system or at least about her teacher incredible that she is teaching them how to flip their emotions and flip and change their energy from outside recess energy to inside activity and they have a transition exercise and one of those is breathing and so she was teaching me how to breathe and count to three and then breathe out you know breathe in through your nose count to three hold it three breathe out through your mouth yeah, grandma, okay, slower grandma. And then she was counting for me. It was awesome. And I'm really glad to see that they're actually teaching kids that they have the ability to change their energy and control how they feel, how they behave, how they act in different situations and different environments. Super exciting. I was excited to hear that and see that. And I guarantee it's not all teachers, but I really like that her teacher is doing that, especially because she is just like my son and probably me, a little high energy. And so those transitions are a challenge. And transitions are a challenge for adults. They're certainly a challenge for kids as well. All right, so those are the two main things I do every day. Plus, I just share on this what I'm learning, what I'm thinking about. And why I thought about personal resets this morning is I woke up. Have you ever woken up in the morning and the last thought that you have or the last dream that flash you remember is, is something that wasn't awesome, wasn't a great experience? And normally I would just get up and go about my day, but I was like, no, I do not want that to be the vision that is in my head of right before I woke up, right? And it was just a reminder of a bunch of just dumb little things all thrown together in a dream that wouldn't make sense to anybody but me. But I'm like, yeah, that is all junk from the past. Well, it's probably telling me that it's junk from the past that I definitely want to let go of, which I'll do today. And I, I laid back down, I took some deep breaths and I just 
visualize something else that I totally want and, and felt what it feels like to have that so that when I got out of bed, I was in a totally different state of mind than if I had just gotten up with the, with the images that I woke up with. You know, if you ever have a bad dream and then you just hop out of bed, have you noticed how it impacts your day? But if you had a great dream and you hop out of bed, you notice how that impacts your day. For me, it does anyway. So that's what I'm working on. Get up and go challenge. I don't know, 2021 maybe we'll call it. Uh, we'll start February 1st. We'll go 30 days. Uh, I kind of wanted to do it in March, but I know that there's going to be a new baby in the family and everything. So February is going to be a crazy month, but you know, never exactly sure when the baby's going to show up. So we will, we'll do it in February. I'll commit to and make sure that's part of my own personal reset is getting back on track with doing that. Cause I really, I really like doing it. It's fun. It keeps me centered. It keeps me focused and it keeps me moving forward in times of dynamic change and craziness, which is going on as much in 2021 as it was in 2020. And guess what? It's been going on at least in my life all along and probably in yours as well. It's just like in 2020, everybody felt it simultaneously. We were all going through massive changes simultaneously. And that just kind of changed the world's energy, at least the way I've experienced and felt it. But guess what? We're in control of that. We'll, we'll put it to what we want it to be. Have an amazing day. If I can help you in any way, hit me up, ask in direct message or in the comments below. Otherwise, I'll be with you tomorrow to give you an update on what I'm doing as I transition from the brick and mortar world to the online world. What's working, what's not, the good, the bad, the ugly, all of it. I pretty much share all of it. The things I do that are epic failures, like you know some of my first webinars and courses and things like that. And then some of the things that are absolutely fun and amazing, like the Get Up and Go Challenge has been my between that and my granddaughter and my my kids that was my savior my sister my sister Beth, and that was just awesome last year all right have a great day and i'll be with you tomorrow